Now we move to part two of our consideration. <clears throat> and we look at the first reading, Isaiah 55, a most beautiful text, and then Psalm 145. Once again, as with the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time, the theme is wisdom. And now, from another angle, remember how the 17th Sunday, Solomon was praying for wisdom. Here is a promise of wisdom. Uh, hoy, hello, whatever you want to say. All who are thirsty, come to the water. And he who has no kesef, kesef, but it's Eli kesef, today in modern Hebrew. Let's buy this ice cream. Eli kesef, I got no money. It's the same word, silver, very nice, you see. So, uh, come. Uh, and uh, receive grain and eat. And walk. You see, come again, Laku, Shuvaru, those who have no Kesef and those uh, without in, without paying, uh, you see, uh, receive uh, wine and milk. This is an invitation. You want to be wise? It doesn't cost a dime. It just means giving your heart to God. That's all. You keep the money for tuition if you want to be an architect or something. But to be wise, just go straight to God. And, you see, come. And don't pay anything. Uh, see, why spend? Why spend your kesef below lechem for what's not bread? You see? Uh, or your wages for what fails to satisfy. And then it starts, you see. Just as, if you can remember last week, Solomon prayed for a listening heart. You see, this, this goes way back. Little Shemuel was um, sleeping. Why was he called Shemuel? Shema El. God heard. God heard Anna's prayer. She had a child. She didn't have a child before that. She was getting old. She was worried. Remember, she was at the shrine and she prayed and she went home and she had a child, Shmuel. That's why she called him Shema El. He's Shmuel. You see, God hears. Okay. Now, Shmuel, God hears, is in the temple, sleeping. And a voice calls him, Shmuel, Shmuel. And he says, here I am, Hanani, here I am. And he runs to uh, Eli. And he says, here I am, you call me. He says, no, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. Third time, the old man says, that's God talking to you. Next time, that voice calls you, Shmuel. You see, you say, speak, Lord. Avdeka uh, Shomeach. Your servant is listening. Shama. That's openness, you see. If we're not open to God's instruction, if we don't want it, we won't get it. He's not going to force it. He'll urge it. He'll try to coax us, but he won't f force it. And so you see, the text says here, listen to me and eat well. Uh, it means more than just um, hear the words. Shema. See, in Hebrew, the word Shema, followed with Bur or something like that, means to obey. We do that. You see? So your your uh, friend, your mother, somebody calls, Joe! You say, I'm not listening. I've blocked my ears. I don't want to listen to you. I'm not going to do what you ask me. Or, 
Yes, I'm all ears. That means I'm open to do whatever you want. You see how this idea, and of course this is a little, uh, uh, the text, you see. So heed me and you shall eat well. Uh, you shall delight in rich fare. Come to me. You see, bend your ear. <laughs> I wish we could just translate these things literally. It would be a little awkward, but we'd get a whole biblical vocabulary. You see? Chatu uh, oznichem. Bend your ear. What does that mean? you got stiff ears. You're not going to hear anything. you got to listen to the ear. you got to listen. It takes you got to do something to receive. You know, if, if I were to say to you, like, here's a check for $5,000. Here. And you just let it stay there. You're never going to get it. You've got to say, thank you. You've got to do something. And that's what he's talking about here. Be receptive. Understand what you're supposed to do. Heed me and you shall eat well. He doesn't mean you're going to make a million dollars and have steak every day. He means you will fare well. Your life will be meaningful. You'll know how to train your kids. You and your wife will get along. You know, it means you will fare well because I will teach you how to live. I made you. I love you. Listen to me, you see, and you will fare well. You shall delight in rich fare, uh, which is nice to say, right? And then it says, uh, listen, that you might have life. And then out of nowhere comes this last line. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. Now, this is tradition. This is what I mean. What is that line? What is that? How does that come to this? We're talking. God is talking to the people. Listen to me. Come. You don't need money. You don't need a checkbook. You don't need to know rich friends. Just come to me and listen. And I will give you wisdom. And in that, I will renew with you the everlasting covenant the benefits, and uh, see, uh, I will cut with you literally because you cut a covenant. I explained that I think last week, right? We had that text with Abraham, didn't we? We had it recently, I think. No, no, we didn't. I it was something else I was doing. See, the covenant is well. You remember how Abraham was told get all these animals and split them in two. Then God goes through it, not Abraham. And that's why you call it, you see, to cut a covenant. And what the person going through says, may this happen to me, cut in two, laid out flat, if I don't keep the covenant. And God goes through that. Not Abraham. God goes through that. So, you have the same here now, you see. Uh, listen. And... Uh, your soul, you see, uh, will, you know, with your soul. And I will cut with you the berit olam. I will cut with you this everlasting, eternal covenant. The chasde David that are assured. Are, let's see what this translation has now. Now, this is what I, one of the things I mean by tradition. This is all about David. How does David get into this text? He's saying, everything I promised David, I'll do for you. And so, there is a, an allusion to Psalm 89. And it's very touching, because you see, as I'll try to explain, once you spoke, I'm, writing, I'm quoting the Psalm 89 now, starting with verse uh, 20. Once you spoke in a vision, and to your faithful ones you said, that's got to be a chasidim, 
Um, on a champion, I have placed a crown. Over the people, I have set a youth. I have found David, my servant. With my holy oil, I have anointed him, that my hand may be always with him, and that my arm will make him strong. This is the Berit with David, okay? And yet, a little later on, the psalm says, Yet you have rejected and spurned and been enraged with your anointed because they weren't faithful. Now God is saying, you come to me, learn from me, and the covenant I made with David, I'll make with the whole people. Isn't that beautiful? Just think, but again, do you see how you have to know tradition? You have to know this psalm? It's interesting, we say that psalm in the, uh, the Office of Readings, and we do the first part, 89, up to a certain point there, verse uh, 38, and it'll be like the moon remains forever, his, pros his posterity, and so forth. A faithful witness in the sky, like the moon. If i got to take the moon away? No. Then I'll never take David away. Yet, you have rejected and spurned us. We don't have a king now. you got some jerk, but he's not in the line of David. What happened? This is a trial. But you see what this psalm is, uh, this uh, text from Isaiah is saying? I will renew with you that berit olam, that, of an, uh, that everlasting covenant. The chas, our translation, the benefits, but it's the hesed word, okay? Chas de. You see, the, um, the works of hesed, the acts of hesed. Uh, that that are assured, firm for David. Suppose you were a Jew living in the 4th century B.C. and you were reading this text of Isaiah and you're thinking, but Lord, we're under foreign domination. we got no king at all. Whatever happened to this promise? And then, what does it say when Gabriel uh, announces to Mary that she's going to be the mother of the Lord? What does it say? Let me find this place, if you'll give me a minute. Um, I didn't think I was going to mention this, so I didn't look it up, get the mark, get it marked. I don't have it. Okay. Um, you shall conceive and bear a son, and... Uh, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and called to the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God, now listen to this, the Lord God will give him the throne of David. I am not false to my promises. And this one will be king forever. He's the very living, eternal Son of God, second person of the Trinity, and his humanity has been raised, transformed, it lives forever, and he is on the throne of David, just as I promised. Now, we can apply that to our lives. God, you never came through. Just hang on. Just wait. Complain, sure, like they did. God, I thought you promised, you know? But don't give up. If God promises, he always comes through. 